to escort His Excellency. The General Assembly will now hear an address from His Excellency Christian Tsai, Prime Minister and Head of Government of the Republic of Madagascar. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Christian Tsai, Prime Minister and Head of Government of the Republic of Madagascar, and invite him to address the Assembly. Monsieur le Président. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, I'm honored to represent here today His Excellency Mr. Andriy Rajulina, President of the Republic of Madagascar and of all Malagasy people. Taking the floor before this august assembly is both a privilege and a duty because it is our discussions and our contributions that will pave the road to follow and determine the future of our common vision of a world of peace, prosperity, and a nation of peoples. President, I wish to echo previous speakers in extending to you my most sincere congratulations on your election. I am convinced that your conviction and commitment for, to multilateralism will guarantee real progress when faced with the different challenges before our organization, in line with the main theme of this, the 74th regular session. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let us harbor no illusions. Our world has, for a few decades now, been torn apart by crises and conflicts by ever-growing inequality. Our planet is every single day a little more under threat by our ill-thought-out excesses and our irresponsible practices. Granted, we committed to pool our energies, to end all forms of poverty, to combat inequality and to tackle climate change, ensuring that we leave no one behind. Granted, too, we were mobilised at all these great summits and conferences to ensure equitable and sustainable human and economic development. But the reality is such that this is no longer sufficient. Together, we must all redouble our efforts to eradicate this same poverty, to promote and ensure this good quality education and this inclusion. We must strengthen and coordinate our activities against this climate change, the consequences of which have become more and more visible and unfortunately are compounding poverty and inequalities between peoples today. Making up for lost time over decades of prevarication or indeed inaction is a duty that befalls us all. So beyond our words and our statements, we have the obligation to go as far as possible in our initiatives and in our actions. We must walk hand in hand to breathe new life into this multilateralism that we believe in so that we, the peoples of the United Nations, may still see ourselves reflected in our organisation, in its values and particularly in its acts. Now, as for my country, Madagascar, we are in integrating the global challenges that come with its membership of the United Nations with its own ambitions and national projects. I would therefore like to affirm here that Madagascar, under the leadership of the, His Excellency President of the Republic, set its major goal for the years to come of this ambition to achieve the status of an emerging economy and to catch up its development delay. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the challenges faced by Madagascar are substantial. Structural and sectoral reforms that are far-reaching have been launched and they will continue with a commitment 
and an unprecedented level of determination. The first challenge is to consolidate the democratic process, as well as governance, and to strengthen our national unity. Our government has committed to and is implementing a policy that promotes and respects individual and collective freedoms, respect for the separation of authority, of powers, and the emergence of a responsible and dynamic civil society where young people and women are actively participating. Indeed, since the beginning of his mandate, the President of our Republic of Madagascar has considered governance issues based on the promotion of democracy, human rights, the fight against corruption, social justice as national priorities. Our general state policy stipulates this clearly and the necessity for this new focus is unequivocal. And this is why the government is fully committed to this and is acting to implement it. The state today is a institutional guarantor for the respect of human rights in Madagascar. And this is one of its main policy areas. It's within this framework that the Malagasy government is focusing and acting on the appropriate and responsible treatment of these subjects, both on one-off events from the news, but also on fundamental issues that are related to the political and strategic dimensions of the respect for human rights in Madagascar. This pertains to security in rural and urban areas, the prison and judicial system, decentralization, the healthcare and nutrition system, as well as the educational one. These are complex programs which require new strategic guidelines and innovative and coordinated initiatives, as defined in our general state policy. Amongst the first measures taken by the current regime is the restoration of peace and security. It is particularly to protect rural populations against the scourge of the Dahalo and Zebu thieves, bandit fighters who atrociously steal cattle in remote areas of Madagascar. The Dahalo use unacceptable and deadly practices, and until recently, nothing has been able to stop them. They attack villages. They rape women and girls, they kill men and young boys. They purloin herds of cattle to fuel their illicit network of Zebu trafficking. This must end. And the security forces are today shouldering, mercifully, their responsibilities to protect the life and possessions of the population, making great sacrifices in this fight. Here I wish to reaffirm the full commitment of the President of our Republic and the whole government to respect and promote human rights. The government's action is thus translates the need to guarantee the security of property and people as well as equitable justice for all. We strongly condemn all forms of violence, whatever the source, when it is done outside the law, and we also condemn all forms of abuse of authority. This is why all cases of deviation from this, particularly on the part of some, ports of some members of the security forces, have been subject to criminal, administrative and disciplinary sanctions. Prevention is also one of the pillars of our policy for peace and security. Manifold initiatives and actions have been launched, particularly through this security sector reform, redeployment of security forces with the construction of new operational local operational bases. We've improved equipment for intervention units. We've developed bovine microchip programs so linked to a location tracking for cattle. We have an export ban on zebus and we have also built new prisons in line with international standards for better prison conditions that respect human rights. Additionally, in line with the 2030 agenda, education and healthcare feature among our country's national priorities. Madagascar recognises that its de development capacity is based on its capacity to educate so that every citizen can participate in our nation's life. The Malagasy government plans to guarantee education for all. An inclusive, equ 
equitable education of good quality for all is an inalienable human right. It is also a gauge of harmonious and sustainable development of society and for our country's stability. We have committed so made a commitment that all girls and boys can complete their primary and secondary education of good quality on equal footing. This should lead to a real quality education. With this in mind, we have decided to build new local schools across the whole country. Also, to continue in recruitment and training of teachers, to provide pupils also with books and school tablets, and also to continue the school canteen programme for vulnerable schools so that we can ensure good school retention rates. Moreover, today Madagascar is, has voluntarily committed to make healthcare accessible to all through the construction of new local hospitals. We've increased the, improved also the quality of medical services in existing healthcare training platforms. We've recruited healthcare staff and built capacity of medical teams, improved the management of public health systems too, particularly through the implementation of a universal health coverage policy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the second challenge faced by emerging, emerging economies to ensure inclusive economic growth, one that seeks to significantly reduce poverty and inequality. Our government is convinced that economic development is possible because human capital remains a priority and is today very much at the heart of all initiatives and actions taken. Madagascar is a young, dynamic nation that is today led by strong, visionary and inclusive leadership. Strengthened by this conviction as we are, Madagascar has therefore the ambition to end this paradox that it is a country with a widely recognised potential but that has accumulated a situation marked by poverty, precarity and unprecedented inequality, making up for lost time in our national development. That our country has been suffering for almost 60 years now is today the bedrock of the, the vision and commitments of His Excellency the President of our Republic. Our, in the, our plan for Madagascar 2019-2023 will lead our country in its dimension on structural transformation to speed up the process of it, the emergence of its economy. In a, as part of a strategic framework of five years, Madagascar is seeking essentially to double its production of electricity by making the most of its capacity in renewable energy. Also preparing 100,000 hectares to ensure that we can be self-sufficient in rice, we are supporting a diversified industrialization program to ensure added value in priority value chains such as tourism, transport, mines, agro-industry, fishing, animal husbandry and cultural industry. We're also promoting young people and women's employment, building new housing and ensuring that uh, we can build and re restore ro roads and rural tracks in ports, airports and markets in all regions of Madagascar. We can show the, benefit, benef the population benefit from access to drinking water and sanitation, new uh, constructions and sport and cultural infrastructure, promoting decent work for all, accompanied by social protection mechanisms to the benefit of all workers. We are constantly in Improving the business climate, ensuring that the economies can benefit certainly from private investment, but also benefit the people and the state. Madagascar's ambitions to achieve the SDGs are real ambitions. And my government is working to focus its efforts on methods and approaches as well as on efficient use of resources. Under its own steam, our state decided to mobilise domestic resources to fund its development plan. Madagascar, nevertheless, is counting on solidarity and opportunities on an international level to provide support to us so we can accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the third challenge is one of the environment. The Paris Climate Agreement has allowed for specific commitments from all signatory countries to fight against te increasing temperatures through nationally determined contributions. However, we must state that all of these contributions that signatory countries have signed up to so far is not sufficient 
to achieve the goals set forth in the agreement. Based on the principle of common but differentiated responsibility, I invite signatory countries to shoulder their responsibilities so the efforts, the necessary means and efforts can be mobilised to counter the current trends because it is the most vulnerable countries that are often those that suf suffer the effects of climate change more intensely. We account for less than 1% of greenhouse gas emissions around the world. However, Madagascar is on the front line of climate change. For example, we see more and more violent and numerous tropical cyclones, droughts, floods and upheavals in the agricultural calendar. But as well as we are of our responsibility, Madagascar is demonstrating a strong political will as part of our collective efforts to mobilise against climate change. In this framework, Madagascar is tirelessly pursuing its efforts to preserve and conserve biodiversity, natural and environmental resources that exist already. At the same time, we have committed to an ambitious and audacious programme for reforestation of at least 200,000 hectares in five years and 20 million trees we planted every year so that Madagascar can come, become what it once was, the Green Isle. Here I would like to highlight the multiple consequences of climate change in the south of the country and the reaffirmed political will of our government to provide structural and ambitious responses to it. The round table, which will all be organised soon, to implement our integrated strategy for the development of the south, co-chaired by the United Nations and the national and our national authorities, will, without a doubt, be a form of a specific commitment to showcase this global partnership. In conclusion, national challenges mean that my country is advocating strongly for the promotion of values of peace, social justice, human rights, responsible governance, inclusion, pride and dignity of the Malagasy people as a whole. And all of this is the foundation of this long-awaited emergence of our economy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations is a major partner for Madagascar. It has always been a vital ally over our, the contemporary history of my country. This step that we have taken again, that once, once, once shows again the will of an entire population to address its development delays. Before I conclude, allow me to say that we have a shared mission, that is to find together a model for mobilisation, partnership and cooperation with a new balance struck so that together we can achieve our common goal of sustainable development. We are facing the same challenges and we must work together because we say, share the same overarching interest, our, joy, our shared planet. I dare to believe that this is a federative vision that should constantly guide the steps we take and inspire each and every one of us so that we can have a better, fairer world, more concerned with the future, a world of dialogue, cooperation and shared prosperity. I thank you very much. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency Christian Tsai, Prime Minister and Head of Government of the Republic of Madagascar.